everyone at Walnut Hills School for the Arts, I'd like to welcome you to the fourth in our series, Spring Art Crush. My name is Garrett Murphy, a graduate of the class of 2008, and I'm delighted to be joined by my co-host of the series, Director of Artistic Studies, Nikki Conrads. Thank you so much, Garrett. In tonight's crush, we celebrate our visual arts department. Uh, we will be joined by Jim Woodside, the department director, faculty members, Ken Tai, Eileen DeRosas, and Rachel Chambers, and some of our wonderful students showcasing and discussing their recent work. Jim, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to our visual arts crush. Thank you, Nikki. Um, my name is Jim Woodside. I'm the director of the visual art program here at Walnut Hill. Um, I have been the director of this program for 33 years, so a long time. I've seen a lot of kids come and come through the program and I have a lot of experience that, uh, that I'd like to share with you and talk about. Um, and what I'm going to do tonight um, is is talk a little bit first before we get to the great part of seeing the kids and their work, talk a little bit about the philosophy of the department and, um, and the kind of underpinning of, of how we do things here. Um, but I think first, before I uh, proceed to that, I will um, I'll introduce the, uh, the three uh, colleagues that are here with me. And um, I've just asked the full-time faculty to join us this evening. Uh, there's also five part-timers as well, and I didn't ask them to be with us, but um, without further ado, I'll just uh, pass it over to Eileen DeRosas and ask her to introduce herself and then make the rounds. Hi, I'm Eileen DeRosas and I teach ceramics and 3D sculpture um, for Q2 and no, for Q3 and Q4, I've been online and in the studio and I just finished, I'm gonna finish my fifth year here at Walnut Hill. Hi everyone, Rachel Chambers. Um, I have been at Walnut Hill for six years now and I've taught a multitude of things. This past year online though, I have taught digital surface design, um, elements of design, it's like a 2D design course, uh, a visual culture, which is kind of uh, an art history and watercolor and collage. Thanks, Rachel. Hey everybody, uh, welcome. Uh, and I have been here for 34 years and um, I have been the painting instructor. Um, at one point in time, I was a ceramic instructor um, and uh, I teach uh, I murals as well and senior studio. And um, it's a pleasure to have you all here tonight. Thanks you guys. Um, as I said uh, a moment ago, we do have um, a number of other teachers who teach um, uh, digital illustration, darkroom photography, printmaking, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, given the uh, time, I, I just didn't think we had time to sort of go through all that um, tonight. But uh, there's so many great um, people, artists, and opinions and voices to be exposed to here. Um, you know, oddly enough, I still get kind of nervous talking about all this stuff. I've been doing it for all these years. And um, and I love working with the kids and there's so much to say, but uh, so you'll have to forgive me if I seem a little bit that way. Um, I think that, that one of the things I always tell kids and their parents um, when they come uh, to enter the school is that what's so important about a young person who's interested in studying or, or digging into the visual arts more is that they need to be in an environment that cultivates that kind of growth, that, that, uh, that helps feed that kind of growth. And I, I've always said that um, I think kids learn art in three ways. They learn by, by doing it, um, getting better, they learn by what the teacher says, and they learn by what the other kids are doing. And so if you have a really healthy environment, that exchange is just going on all the time. And, and that's why, and wonderful things happen within it. I've seen it, I've seen it hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, and, and I think that, that the, the other thing that, that, uh, and I think the kids would, would attest to this, um, 
the philosophy we have here in the department is that, you know, we expect the kids to work hard, to experiment, to try different things, to take their artwork seriously, but maybe not themselves so seriously. You know, we have a lot of fun doing it. Um, and, and that's not just to make it fun, you know, I mean, that's, that's great too. But I think that, a, that anybody, especially a young person, needs to feel safe. And I, I don't mean physically safe, of course, but emotionally safe to, uh, to express themselves, to learn, to learn from each other. So that kind of warm environment, that kind of uh, exciting environment needs to be a part of the, um, a big part of the equation here. So, uh, um, and, and I think the kids see that exchange between the teachers and they model it. Um, and we have, it, it has worked. We've seen kids go on to do amazing things. Um, I still think of them as kids, even though some of them are like 50 years old now, but we're still in touch with, with a lot of them. So that's very, very satisfying to see. Um, and I think the kids will maybe talk a little bit about that too when they have a chance. Um, now, this last year has been a, a strange one. Uh, that's putting it, that's the biggest understatement I've probably ever said. But um, learning to, to do this stuff online, which none of us had had experience doing, um, we were sort of thrown into it. But we got the hang of it. We got the kids to do some really cool work online. And uh, as I said before, my biggest concern was that they wouldn't be around each other and they wouldn't be able to grow from each other. Um, but, but they have, and they have figured out ways to do that. Um, obviously, it's preferable to be in the studio working together. Um, and that, uh, and we have, we will be doing that again next year, everybody, but this year has been kind of half and half. Um, but I think that the kids and the teachers, I know that this is true, have grown with the experience. They've learned together. And um, I mean, I think that that's philosophically uh, holds anyway. You know, good teaching uh, it, it, it is learning. And, um, and, and you learn from the, the kids that way. So I think I'm gonna. That's, I'm gonna leave it at that for that. Um, what we're gonna do next is um, we are going to um, flip through some images made by our international students. I didn't want to leave them out of this event because about half of our students right now um, are working from uh, uh, remotely from home. Most of those kids are in Asia, and they've done some amazing work. Um, we actually two of them are here with are going to be here with us tonight, um, but rather than in the interest of time going through and explaining all these things we just don't have the uh the time to but we're really excited to share them visually with you so what uh what rachel has done um is put together a slide deck of the international students and we're just going to kind of flip through it and give you a a, a glimpse at some of the things that uh, kids have done here uh, and if any of the teachers would like to jump in on this and um and actually expand, uh, expand on some of the things that I said about uh, this year, the unusual nature of this year. Yeah, sure. Um, so this is Cindy June, and um, this is three different projects that, uh, that she's got. Um, we did landscapes, and we did time of day, and this is uh, for our watercolor class. And then we did some, um, some abstracts, and we talked about Dadaism, some more of Cindy's work. Yolanda's work, really nice, delicate lines. Really, she, she really, really knows how to layer color and be patient. And Michelle, this is for watercolor and collage. And Cindy Lou, um, she, she played with this stuff called Yupo paper and it's a plastic paper that does not absorb the water. So you've got to wait for it to evaporate and it leaves this beautiful um, kind of puddled look. And then also Cindy loves her digital. So she also took her watercolor digitally. More of Cindy's work. They learned how to make their own digital brushes. Yeah, uh, we're also, um, as you flip through it, we're also in the process right now, all of the uh, faculty of putting together a massive visual art exhibit 
online, which will uh, which will go live um, on uh, next Tuesday, and um, you'll see this work and lots and lots more. Um, so it, it it is really satisfying having gotten through this this year, which has been a tough one, to see the amazing work that they that they still do, and uh, especially I think some of these kids that are just have just been at home the entire time. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, and Eileen doing sculpture with the, the, the kids online. What, what's that been like? And kind of crazy. <laughs> um, I learned a lot about trying to teach online. I think by Q4, I said, pick whatever material you know how to use and let's make this thing. Oh, this is one. This was when we did marionettes. This is um, Hannah Jung's marionette. And um, it's crazy and I love it. She just made all these pillows and put them together and made like pillow person. And it's very funny. Um, and this was, this is Charlie. So we did interior of the body. I let them pick anything in their body as long as it was inside. And this is the one where I was like, I can't teach you how to do this online anymore. Not that, but like, it's hard to do technique. You have to know how to do it. So this is what he made. And the gray part is actually the shadow of the sculpture, which is the red part. And mm -hmm. Charlie's a senior and he's been working with shadows, this whole online thing. I think taking pictures and he saw the shadows of all his work opened up this whole other avenue of expression for him. Say, that makes I, so much sense for Charlie. Sorry, I just got to say, it makes so much sense for Charlie working with him in apparel. Like he he really talks to the the delicate nature of things, yeah. Yeah. like a shadow. Yeah. Uh, and if I'll 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 chime in as well, real quickly on 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 Charlie. He he's these things with shadows. I just had senior critique about an hour ago, and he's amazing work he has put out. And what's been so great about the online kids, which been so impressive, is they have figured out how to produce things with really nothing around them. Sometimes they're in their kitchen or their bedroom and, uh, and it, it's, and they're making really sophisticated looking artwork. It, it hasn't been, you know, I, 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 I had to rise to see what they could do. I was like, how are we going to do this? But they did, you know, that's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. And this is Michelle, Michelle Ha and this is not Photoshopped at all. <laughs> I asked her, did you Photoshop your background? She was like, no, I just wanted it to look good. So we did it. So these are blood vessels. This, that was her inspiration. Um, this is Min and this is the same assignment. These are like this big. They're really, really tiny. Min did this other thing where they went on this long idea and then none of those ideas worked and they were gonna make eyeballs, but when she ordered the eyeballs, they were like this big. So she had to come up with something new and she kept changing her mind, but I think she learned a lot and she's very proud of these photographs. Yeah, they don't look, that, I mean, I, I would have thought that these were like, men. Really yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice job, men, nice. Um, and this is Xiaobei, Lizzie Xu. She did the small intestine that was her inspiration and she could finish and this is Suri Tao. Suri's a freshman so you can see the, like the development like Lizzie's a senior her work looks really polished and Suri learned so much making this rib cage and I'm really proud of her because this was not easy to be a freshman in a class learning 3D from a teacher who doesn't speak your native tongue on the other side of the world. Who and she has she's... never met in well, person. I've never met now, no, I've never Suri's been great and she has never been at the school yet. We can't wait to get her here in the fall. But um, yeah, and there's a lot of kids like that. Yeah. This is a still from Zoe Wang's shadow puppet movie. So I had them make shadow puppets and then they had to film it.
So the, okay. the last one, the last one. The last yeah. one. And my Zoom didn't play the sound on any of these. I hope it's playing for all of you. This is Cindy Liu. And I made a clip of her movie because it's four minutes long. But these are some screenshots and stills from her movie about sharks and other things that I hope you watch on the go and look online for the show because this entire movie it will hold your attention for all five minutes mm -hmm. really good and this is just the beginning clip it's only a minute long and then we're then that's it i hardly like swimming it is not the swimming part i hate it but the water itself it tastes like iron for reasons i don't know submerge me I was only 1.2 meters tall when the standard height of water in the adult pool is 1.5 meters. My feet never touched the ground, so I highly doubt that there was ever a ground or just an abyss. I did not look inside until the day I gathered my courage. Uh. <laughs> That was that was a, a, a terrific little taste of what the kids um, are doing remotely. Most of those kids, as I said, um, in I think all those kids we just looked at are in Asia. Um, as you can probably sense from the four of us, we could just go on for hours about these. Like there's so much we want to show you, and we don't have time to do that. Um, but the, the the kids produce such genuine things. You know, the discoveries they make as they bring their skills along. You know, we always look at skill and kind of artistry you don't master one and then start making art you know that they, they they come together uh and it's just been it's just amazing to see what they do and i keep repeating that but it it really is so all right now for the best part of our show is to meet the uh the students that are here with us this evening uh and i'm going to ask them all to turn their cameras on right now hi everybody um, um I think what uh, before we start looking at their work and uh, and talking about it, I'll just ask them each to uh, uh, to introduce themselves, maybe how long they've been at Walnut Hill and where they're from, and um, we'll uh, we'll take it from there. So, Alana, you first. Hi, I'm Alana. I'm a freshman at Walnut Hill, so I've been here for this year. I'm a day student, and I live in Needham. Thanks, Alana. Great. Uh, and Sophia. Hello, my name is Sophia Kim. I'm a current sophomore, and this is my first year at Walnut Hill. I am calling in from Seoul, South Korea. And I, I can't, uh, I, I can't not embarrass Sophia with this one fact. Sophia has been a great student here, and I do appreciate that she is staying up so late in in Seoul, Korea. Uh, but. Sophia's mother was also a student in the art department. So this will show you how long Ken and I have been doing this. So we had Sophia's um, mother, Rachel, as a student back in the um, early 90s. And um, someday we'll tell Sophia all about what her mother was like back then, okay? All right, thank you, Sophia. Uh, Grayson? Hi, um, I'm Grayson. I, I'm a sophomore, so I've been here the past two years, uh, and I'm just in Walpole, Mass. Um, and Talia? I think. Hi, I'm Talia. I've been here for the past two years. I'm a junior, and I'm from Shanghai, China. Thank you. Uh, Ollie? Hi, I'm Ollie. I'm junior. Uh, I've been in Walnut Hill for three years, and I'm in South Korea, So. Thank you. Um, Jackie Phillip. Hi, my name is Jackie. Uh, I'm a sophomore and this is my second year at Walnut Hill and I am currently in Sherburn, Massachusetts. And Geffen. Hi, my name is Geffen. I am a current junior. I've been here since I was a freshman and I'm from Teaneck, New Jersey. Uh, Alexa. Hi, my name is Alexa. I'm a freshman. This is my first year at Walnut Hill, and I'm a boarding student from Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts. And last but not least, uh, Isa. Hi, I'm Isabella, um, but most people here call me Isa. I am a junior, and this is my first year at Walnut Hill. I'm a boarding student, but I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. Excellent. Um, maybe just so everybody can be clear, Raise your hand if you're on campus right now 
while you're doing this. Okay, so you get a, uh, at, uh, you get a pretty good sense of you know, some kids at home, some kids in Korea, um, and we've been juggling a lot of very interesting stories uh, all year. So uh, enough about that for the moment, but I will ask Rachel now to, um, to prompt up some pictures. And what we'll do is ask the student whose work it is to, uh, to speak a little bit. Sure, so we're gonna start with Ollie. Let me get the presentation here. There we go. So um, Ollie, would you like to, how about you just go for it? Awesome. Um, this is my uh, drawing from Elements of Design, a design class. And it's one of the um, studies that we did about lines, how line impact, like how far and how close, and then just like a little difference, like how thin or thick. And I did a little observation with just lines and then I drew apples and I believe it was like book and there's little like crumbles of like paper I did um, to just like make it interesting. So, and for closer, uh, as it was getting closer, I kind of made it thicker. And then the one that is like lying behind is like farther away, so I made it thinner. And this is also from my, uh, the design class. Um, the one in the left is um, drawing to uh, design like different texture, I believe. I forgot what it was, I'm so sorry. No, no, you're making me sound real good right now. Keep going. <laughs> um, that, so that project in particular was about line and pattern and we did like grayscales, but made out of different patterns. So the more line work uh, that took up the negative space, the darker your, the, the shading got. And um, Ollie did a wonderful job. I love this. Love Thank this. you. You're welcome. Um, so I drew like one of my uh, plants <laughs> in my house. So um, it's my um, succulent plant. And the one in my, um, in the right is a texture study where we uh, study about different texture. We had this example of like hair uh, or feathers, or it could be like a muscle, just like different texture through like drawing. And I made it fuzzy. So this is also one of my plants my um uh snake plant and I made it fuzzy uh because I just felt like just make it a little fuzzy um because snake plant is usually like slippery so I was just wondering I think um um uh in the interest of our uh because we could explain so much of these Ollie and everybody I I I, I think I would also think it would be really valuable for you to talk, you know, you're one that's been working remote the whole year, actually since last spring, okay? And you've been doing amazing work in all your classes and meeting all your responsibilities. So maybe as Rachel flips through the images, rather than us trying to like kind of dissect each one because it's, it's kind of hard, I wonder if you could talk about what it's been like for you personally to work in this way, you know? Um, first of all, my sleep schedule is all messed up, that's for sure. But um, it's quite interesting because I feel like for, um, I don't know how to describe this because I'm like literally across the earth. So right now it's like morning, like late night. And um, it's hard, but it's kind of manageable at the same time. Yeah. It's I don't know how to explain this. I'm so sorry. No, you're doing a great job. Oh. You're doing a, a terrific job. Um, um, and uh, I don't, I don't mean to cut you off or anybody off, but I know that we're, we're going to have to kind of oh, just love this piece you just did for Senior Studio. Just, uh, just a beautiful range of work that she's been producing, all in that little room where you are. Yes. Yeah. So it's like mixture. I took painting, drawing classes mostly in throughout year, and I kind of focus on 
and uh vague i guess like um ambiguity in terms because mostly um i tried to simplify my drawing as possible the one that you just saw like before about like food and very colorful one um that's like the most simplified idea i made i had to go back and forth with jim because we couldn't like i was trying to go for one um sketch and then jim um told me to simplify more and more and yeah. i just came up with this and then this is a more metaphorical drawing yeah. um okay i think we better um move on uh oh uh, ali and um thank you so much it's great work and um it's it's so much great work from all these kids. So remember, you're just getting a little taste of things here. And uh, I would I'll ask Sophia to uh, to maybe talk about her experience a little bit. Um, one thing, and then I, I'll be quiet, is that Sophia has not, she's been remote the entire year and has not been uh, at school here um, yet uh, on campus at all. But uh, so what's it been like for you, Sophia? Um, well, it was really challenging as I moved from a much more STEM based or like a sports based school to an arts school. And I'm really thankful for that experience and opportunity. Um, but throughout my artworks, you may notice like additions to different techniques, specifically Korean traditional folk paintings and drawings. Um, the motivation for this technique was being a third culture kid. I have always wanted to express my cultural background, which is why I have incorporated Korean folk techniques and the color schemes. Um, for the sculpture part, I'm not sure if it's in the presentation, um, but I have worked on the detailed parts of the textures. For the heart sculpture, I wanted to express the muscles and veins that cover our very essential um, organ, which is the heart. And for the marionette, I worked on the skeleton to show the bone sizes and like the rib cages. Throughout, though it was a very hard time, especially joining classes virtually, I believe that overcoming the barriers of those obstacles were much easier with our art department. Um, the hard work and care that our teachers and peers had for us is something that I greatly appreciate. Thank you. Thanks, Sophia. You did a great job, you did a great job. Um, and as we kind of speed things along, we'll uh, ask uh, Issa to say a word or two about some of her work. Hi, so these both of the ones that you're seeing here are from my drawing class with Jim. I definitely think that the piece where we used a lot of like old technology, like cameras and like broken phones was so much fun for me to do. I was able to really focus on detail which was something that I know Jim and I had discussed a lot. Um, and just like being able to pay attention to those like really, really small details was something that I got to work on a lot this quarter and last quarter in Jim's drawing class, which I really enjoyed. Um, I found that I really did love ceramics, which is something that Eileen was able to help guide me through in Q3 and 4 with our tile project that I completely fell in love with and ended up making so many tiles, <laughs> but those are just four of them. Um, I think being able to be on campus was just a complete privilege. And I know that it definitely was something that I was looking forward to in the beginning of the year and hopeful about, and I could not be happier with my experience this year, especially as a new student. And even though it's been a really weird time, I've still been able to get to know all of like the faculty and other like students here. And it's just been so much fun in the visual art department. And this is, that was a painting for Ken and this is a printmaking um, project for Stephanie's class. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Excellent. Um, and now back to Alana, who I apologize we had started with, and now we will proceed with. Thank you. Um, so these were some of the tiles, like Isa had mentioned, in the ceramics class, you were doing tiles. 
and I decided to like test out and see like if I could like print with um, these ceramic tiles, which like I had obviously like never done before or like tried. So these I did, like I sculpted them in class and then fired them and then like used a ink pad and put them on fabric. And I was really happy with how they came out. Um, this was also in quarter three, so Ken's um, past, present, future painting class that I did. So this one was kind of about like, like my experience as an artist, like kind of my growth. And I think it like goes both ways where like when I was young, you can see like the like really like just in your face colors and like the sharp lines and the kind of just like, I don't know, like the really defined like features of it. And then as it like smooths out into like a more realistic painting, I guess. But now at Walnut Hill, I've also like learned more about like going back into that like more abstract process and like really exploring in my art. So I think it kind of goes both ways. And then this was a drawing for Jim's drawing class, kind of like a study that we did of um, a tree outdoors um, with a bunch of like stuffed animals and behind was the neighborhood. And I kind of was like playing with contrasting elements of like how like the very like real material things, I guess, were like more abstract, like the houses, I guess. Um, whereas like st the stuff that like brings out more imagination, like the like um, stuffed animals um, and the tree, I guess, were more realistic and more detailed. Thank you, Alana, great stuff. And um, moving on to uh, Alexa, another uh, new student. Uh, I'm, I don't mean new, this is her first year. Yes, yeah, so this is a drawing that I did earlier on in the year, um, and it includes labels and ink and oil pastel and just a whole combination of materials, which is one thing that I really love about it. Um, but it's definitely one of the, my favorite pieces I've done this year because it's very playful and it just kind of like represents my personality, which I really love. <laughs> Um, this is also part of the past, present, future assignment that Alana was talking about. And so it is an infant's brain on in the first third of the painting and then a teenager's brain and then an adult's brain. So kind of like my past, present, future. Um, and it really taught me a lot about blending and using vibrant colors, um, which was a really good experience to have. This is something that I did in printmaking. It was part of a progression book. Um, so it, the book started off with just a blank black print and slowly you could make out more and more details as you flip through the book. So this is the last print of the book when the image all comes together. And it is an, under, an undershot of lily pads, um, which is, gives it a very whimsical feel um, which I really love, and it's very geometric, which I also really like about it. This is a very recent drawing that I did. Um, the assignment was to try and capture Walnut Hill a little bit in one drawing, and we did these drawings out on the hill, and I always really love drawing outside because you can see what everyone is doing, which is one really great thing about Walnut Hill is that everyone's constantly just moving and this is a beautiful willow tree that is on the hill surrounded by just random things that I was looking at like dandelions and flowers um so I really love it and it really just captures Walnut Hill. It does, great drawing. Thank you um Alexa. Boy that description of Walnut Hill in the field was just beautiful. We should uh you did a great job with that um uh, proceeding on to Geffen, who is joining us from New Jersey, right? You got it. Yeah, I've been in New Jersey uh, since last spring when we went online, um, and it's been a very interesting experience, but I'll start off with this drawing. This is uh, my most recent drawing with Jim this year, 
Uh, it's oil pastel and uh, yarn and thread and ink. <laughs> and um, it was a food project and I kind of got into the pattern of food and what it means to like examine the routine of eating. I actually started the class with making a weaving and then Jim kind of inspired me to uh, implement um, more of a textile and tactile uh, aspect to my drawings. And so that's kind of how I tackled this one. And I, I was definitely inspired um, from my classes with Rachel too um, in surface design and, um, and weaving. And I think that kind of culminated into that drawing. Um, but yeah, uh, this is some of my apparel work. Um, this is my best friend from home. And we were working on a knitwear project, kind of like a knitwear, dancewear, activewear project. Um, and it's been really cool to to work on apparel, one of those like uh, kind of more sculptural uh, mediums at home. Uh, I've learned a whole lot. I've made like all of my um, pattern pieces myself with um, paper produce bags from the supermarket. Uh, that's what I use, and then. With Stephanie uh, Macklin's help, I create my patterns, I design it, I go like to a bunch of fabric stores, get all my fabric, and um, I've learned a whole lot through uh, doing a lot of it kind of at home on my dining room table. Um, and then we take an editorial photograph, which is also really cool um, and a fun experience to do with uh, my family. This was my most recent project. Uh, I took these photos yesterday. Um, uh, this is kind of like the uh, junior thesis project that I was working on with Stephanie and a few other kids in my uh, apparel class. And it was kind of whatever we wanted, whatever our thesis was. And my thesis was kind of that like uh, limbo phase of, of growing up and like, um, hanging on to adolescence, but like moving into more of like a sophisticated future. Um, and so I kind of uh, held on to threads of like sports I played when I was younger and then contrasted them with like a blazer. And a blazer, that was like one of the hardest things I've made. I made also a, a button up shirt. And it's like, it sounds like these really simple things, like these everyday things, but the construction has been, um, really cool and yeah that's like the the um button up shirt that I was talking about it's like a shirt dress with a uh, jersey over shirt <laughs> and this was also yesterday um but yeah uh, I just focused on like that contrast of kind of that youthful um sports like active wear with a more sophisticated um silhouette and fabric choice with like the satin button up and yeah it all came together in the photograph oh this is with Rachel one of my favorite classes uh that she created last year Rachel I don't know um so this class started with uh it was surface design for apparel where we were creating uh layered prints on actual fabric and then um, it was just serendipitous that it all worked out that as we went online in March, we were ready to go digital. So this was, yeah, yeah. This was um, the beginning of your digital life with textiles. Yeah, also something I was like really unfamiliar with but I really uh, loved It's I kind of, you can see like the pattern coming through again. And uh, this is a repeat pattern. Uh, I think it was, I don't remember the project exactly, but I think we just had to draw a few motifs and mine were all shoes. And so like the frame you see around is, are also shoes. And then there's like boots and then sneakers on the side. Um, so that was really fun. And I made like a bunch of different colors for that. And this is also surface design, um, kind of taking apart the Hagia Sophia. Am I right, Rachel? Is that the building? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the monument. And um, we were tasked to kind of take elements from it and then create a repeat pattern. And then also um, 
transpose. I don't know if that's the right word, but put them, put their, put our designs onto um, objects. Um, so this class has taught me so much. I use it. I use the skills I've learned in this class um, all the time, especially in apparel and kind of mocking up um, ideas. Um, so yeah, it's been such a great class. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Geffen. Um, uh, thanks, uh, Geffen. Geffen is, uh, uh, there's so much more, so many more stories here. I want to hear more about what it's like for, uh, for Geffen, uh, you know, working in New Jersey there all year long when your friends are all up here, not that far away, you know, it's a, but anyway, we're all really proud of her and everybody for, uh, for their determination for hanging in like that and really, really growing in these difficult times. But, uh, I'm going to pass it on um, to Grayson, who is here on campus, uh, but uh, Grayson's a day student, uh, correct, Grayson? Am I right about that? Uh, yeah, I'm a day student. Okay, so you're on. Yeah, um, so this piece was for my digital illustration class. It was actually uh, the final piece we did this year, trying to implement sort of the stuff that we had been learning about uh, the past uh, few quarters, because I had taken this class all year. Um, and the project was just scale. So I tried to communicate uh, how big that guy is by the fact that uh, the lighthouse is sort of getting in his face. And I think that this project was a bit more vague in instruction uh, than the other ones for that class. But I think that's part of why I enjoyed it because I had a lot of flexibility what with we were able to do. Okay. This was also for my uh, digital illustration class. I think this was from last quarter. Um, from left to right, it's a progression of using smaller and smaller brushes um, on top of the same piece. We were trying to replicate uh, certain photos that we were given. Um, and I really like how the final piece came out, but I also really enjoyed looking at them uh, sort of as a progression of like how far I went into it. So yeah. This was for uh, Jim's drawing class. Uh, I think you said, had that same assignment of having to work with the uh, just the line art pens without doing an initial sketch. And so I really got into this project. I remember staying a few hours uh, after to try to get this done because I really liked the rhythm of this piece. I was having a lot of fun with it. So I think that sort of helped in creating something that I'm proud of uh, because of the end product and also because of the, the process of it. And then this is from Eileen's sculpture class. I had done this last quarter as well, I think. And at first I wasn't a huge fan of how it came out, but I think uh, it's sort of a rare thing for me is uh, the more I look at it, I think the more I grow accustomed to it. I think I like it more, I like stepping back from the process, uh, which was pretty tedious. So it's uh, easier to be frustrated with it. But I think uh, the assignment was to make uh, rooms out of, just cardboard and basically hot glue and uh, a lot of math, uh, which I didn't enjoy, but I think that the end result is something that I can step back and be proud of. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you, uh, Grayson. Uh, thanks a lot. And um, uh, Talia, you're, uh, you're up. Hi. Um, so what's shown over here is my work in Eileen's ceramics class. And our, our prompt was a tea set, but I have to thank Eileen for bearing with me, just having me do whatever I want and somehow ending up with the same idea of what her prompt was for the class. Um, the flower things on the side, they're supposed to be egg holders and you can flip them and reverse them however you want, depending on decoration. Um, oh yeah, here's more shots of them. Um, yeah, um, and this is a piece of work for Jim's drawing class. Um, I think we just started off as an abstract work and we just kept adding on to it and then adding color. Um, it started off as black and white and then slowly color was added in. And I really like the end result of this. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Uh, this is another piece for Jim's drawing class. He put a bunch of electronics on the table and we had to construct a piece out of it. Um, Jim had to stop me at some point because I could just keep adding on this forever. Um, but this was also really fun for me to do. I love working in pen. Um, 
And this is another piece of Jim's dog, Boo, um, which he brought into the class for just a model. Um, I think this was using like brushes and ink. He looks so sophisticated, Talia. He made <laughs> Boo look royal. It's amazing. Boo's a handsome lad. <laughs> really good. Thank you, Talia. It's a beautiful, beautiful stuff. There's so many questions I have for each of you, but uh, we'll move on. Um, and um, Jackie. Hi. So um, this was my final piece for digital and just how Grayson was mentioning. Uh, this was the scale project. So I basically had to make, you know, something that's usually normal size be either like bigger or smaller or vice versa. So I just chose to kind of draw something really cute and simple. And the project didn't take me as long as I was expecting, considering it was like the final project. And this took me like maybe two hours to do and I put it together in a weekend and I was like, okay, what do I do now? But um, I'm really happy with the final result. And I played a lot with um, all the skills we learned in the class, such as using multiply layers to add atmosphere and also with lighting. And I really like, uh, I think my favorite thing about this piece is probably the color palette. So yeah. Um, and then uh, this is also for apparel. I am actually doing the editorial photo today, so I couldn't put it in, but um, I made this piece for uh, Stephanie's class and um, I had to go fabric shopping and I had this idea to kind of make something very, I like making stuff with a lot of flowers, a lot of like romantic themes in a way. So I chose this really nice purple fabric and this also pink fabric. It's really gonna be a green fabric, but I didn't have time to go back to the store and get more green fabric. So I just stuck with what I had and I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. Um, I um, I had a lot of trouble this uh, this year in general. I have problems with my hands, so uh, kind of trying to working around that and uh, a lot of um, issues with that has been kind of hard. But I made it work, and I'm pretty happy with this final result. And I'm excited to do the photos today, so that should be pretty fun. Excellent. And then this last thing is from Eileen's class, the Shadow Puppet Show that Eileen asked me to put in. So here it is. <laughs> but, uh, this, is last, this is our last thing, so I think it's going to be good. Oh, good. This is our last Thank piece. Thank you for putting it in. Thank yeah. you. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's gorgeous. How could I not put this in? OK, I'm going to press play. Thanks to all the students uh, who uh, appeared here at the last minute. Some of them we just asked yesterday to do it. Um, and, uh, you know, as you can tell that they're, we're really excited about their work. Um, we're really excited about all that they've done here and especially proud of the achievements they've made uh, this year under, you know, these conditions. I, I genuinely mean that. And I think um, if nothing else, working with young artists is helping them become problem solvers and innovators and adapt to things. And certainly this is year, this year has been the, uh, the opportunity to adapt and they've all done it. Um, so some, some great stuff and we could just go on and on about it, but uh, I think that's enough for now. Um, and I think I'm going to uh, thank you all and pass it back to Nikki. Thank you so much, Jim. That was such a wonderful presentation. And thank you to Ken Tai, Eileen De Rosas, and Rachel Chambers for joining us, and the wonderful students, of course, from the VA department. Thank you for joining us tonight, uh, our spring art crush. And now back to Garrett. Thanks, Nikki. We hope you'll tune in again tomorrow evening as we conclude our spring crush series and celebrate the dance department. Nikki and I will be joined by head of men's training Peter Stark, guest choreographer Jean Malik, and three of our wonderful dancers. In the meantime, from all of us here at Wallen Hill School for the Arts, have a good night and take care.